कहां तक आए वो देख सकते बाद में देखिए हाँ क्रॉस है वो वैसे भी A very good afternoon to all of you. Welcome back to Civics Second Year class. So today we will discuss your second chapter, that is Directive Principles. Sorry, Fundamental Rights and Directive Principles of State Policy. Fundamental Rights and Directive Principles of State Policy. This is your second chapter. The weightage for this chapter is twelve marks. Okay, weightage for this chapter is 12 marks. Okay, uh, so you will get one LAQ and one BSAQ from this chapter. This is very small chapter. Okay, uh, you have only three topics in this chapter. That is fundamental rights, directive principles and fundamental duties. So when you are learning fundamental rights and directive principles, along with that, you have to study the differences between fundamental rights and directive principles. Okay, so these three are the important LAQs. Then coming to very short answers, you have seven answers. If you are thorough with this, you will get one question. Mostly, it is fundamental duties which is asked. Okay, but uh, if you are thorough with, you know, fundamental rights and directive principles, you can answer all VSAQs except this one. So, this one answer you have to learn separately. So, let us start with the fundamental rights incorporated in the Indian Constitution. So, Indian Constitution, it guarantees six fundamental rights to every citizen. Every citizen of India, he has got six fundamental rights. Okay. In 1978, an amendment was made to this. Before 1978, we had seven fundamental rights. Okay. Before 1978, Okay, in 1978, an amendment was made to the constitution and one fundamental right from this list was deleted. And now we are, now we have six fundamental rights. Okay, now this fundamental rights, they are discussed in the part three of our constitution. Fundamental rights are discussed in part three of our constitution. 
from articles 12 to 35 from articles 12 to 35 of our constitution deals with fundamental rights and these rights are given to all the citizens irrespective of caste religion gender etc so let us see what are the six fundamental rights the first one is right to equality right to equality the second one is right to freedom third one is right against exploitation right against exploitation then your fourth right is right to freedom of religion. Right to freedom of religion. Your fifth right is cultural and educational. Right. Okay. Cultural and educational right. Then we had right to property. And we have, we have not given number to the uh, right to property because this right has been deleted from the list of fundamental rights in 1978. And the right last is right to constitutional remedies. Okay, so these are the six fundamental rights. So how will you remember? See, this order is very important. You have to write this answer in this order only. When you are writing about rights, you should start with right to equality only. So how will you remember it? See, uh, in introduction, we said that this is given to all the citizens, irrespective of caste, religion, gender, etc. So from that point, you can keep in your mind that there is equality. Okay, uh, this uh, first right is your right to equality. Everybody should be treated equally okay so when you are treated equally you are free there is freedom given to every individual there is freedom given to every individual so when you are free so nobody can you know uh, exploit you so there is right against exploitation if you are free it doesn't mean that you can do whatever you want so uh, you, you have right against exploitation. What is exploitation? What do you mean by exploitation? Taking advantage of, you know, innocence or the situation. Okay, then, then everybody, we follow a religion, right? Every individual has got one religion, following a religion. They have their own beliefs. So you have your right to religion. Then we get, you know, uh, we, we come to know about our culture. We get educated from our religion also. Just to remember the order. After religion, we have cultural and educational rights. So once we get educated, we earn. So we have right to property. Then to protect all these rights, if, there are, if any of your right, okay, you are unable to enjoy, then you can go to court of law through right to constitutional remedies to protect your rights. So first, you should know this order. Okay, you should know this order. If you are thorough with this order, it will be easy for you to learn this answer. So let us first see 
right to equality so article 14 to 18 of indian constitution deals with right to equality so students come to me saying madam we are unable to you know remember the article numbers so if you can't remember the article numbers just like i have written on the in the beginning that article sorry right to equality article 14 to 18 remember this then you can write in points you need not mention this articles again okay you need not mention this directly you can write in points or in a paragraph but at the beginning when you are starting you should write the article numbers so how will you remember this just give a quote article to say fundamental rights are starting from article 12 to 35 so article 12 and 13 they are the introduction to the fundamental rights so from 14 we will start 14 to 18 how many articles are there five articles just uh, keep in your mind that in right to equality there are five articles okay then you can directly write in the points or in a paragraph okay so article 14 it provides equality before law what is equality before law it is rule of law all are equal before law then article 15 says that there shall be no discrimination against any citizen on the basis of caste religion gender etc in using public places okay when we are using public public places citizen should not be discriminated on the basis of caste religion gender etc then equal opportunities shall be provided to all equal opportunities shall be provided to all in regard to an employment in regard to employment that means every citizen should get the opportunity to appear for the government job exams okay it is on the merits they will be selected they won't discriminate they won't say that only a particular community should appear this exam no equal opportunity is provided to all the citizens then it abolishes untouchability we don't discriminate people on the basis of their caste we abolish we, uh, we are not practicing abolishing means we don't practice untouchability and state uh, article 18 says that no title other than military and academics shall be given by the state okay no titles titles means before your name for example in armed forces you will have you know captain major commander okay and in academics you can you will get a title of doctor only these these titles are given by the state okay no other title shall be given other than for military and academics so i hope right to equality is clear next is right to freedom so what do you mean by right to freedom this is discussed in article 19 see if you see article sorry right to equality uh, is up to article 18 immediately after 18 it is 19 it is your right to freedom from 19 to 22 so you have four articles under this you have four articles under this remember this how many articles are there in each right in right to equality you had five articles that is 12 to 18 in second right that is your right to freedom you have four articles that is from 19 to 22 so what is article 19 you will get a question for two marks article 19 or right to freedom casually they'll ask this so article 19 it provides for six freedoms under article 19 again we have six freedoms what are those six freedoms 
freedom of speech and expression. You have freedom to speak. You have freedom to express your opinion. Then freedom to assemble peacefully without arms. You have freedom to assemble in, in a place. But you should assemble peacefully without weapons with you. That is without arms. Freedom to form associations and unions. You are free to form your own associations or groups or unions. Nobody will stop you. Freedom to move freely throughout the country. You are free to move to any part of the country. Nobody will stop you. Then freedom to reside or settle anywhere in India. Okay, if I'm getting a better opportunity in some other part of the country, I can go and settle there. Nobody will stop me. And freedom to practice any profession. Okay, but it should be a legal one. Freedom to practice any profession of your choice. So these are the six freedoms under Article 19. What are the six freedoms? Freedom of speech and expression. Freedom to assemble peacefully without arms. Freedom to form associations and unions. Freedom to move freely throughout the country. Freedom to reside or settle in any part of the country. And freedom to practice any profession of your choice. So these are the fundam uh, uh, fundamental freedoms given under Article 19. These are the fundamental freedoms given to all the citizens under Article 19. I hope I'm clear with this. Article 18, sorry, uh, Article 19. Let us move to Article 20. Article 20 says that no person shall be punished except for the violation of law. No person shall be punished except for the violation of law. If you are punishing anybody, it should be only for the violation of laws. Article 21 says that there is a right to life and liberty. Every individual has right to live his life on his own terms. He has got liberty, freedom to live his life on his own terms. That is Article 21. Then this Article 21A, what is this A? The capital letter A, it represents the amendment. It represents the Amendment, Article 21A, that is, Article 21 was amended and this point was added to it. What is that? Article 21A says that state, that means government, shall provide compulsory and free education to the children between the age of 6 to 14 years. Okay, so here, Article 21. It is directing, it is directing the government to provide free and compulsory education to the children up to the age of 14 years, between the age of 6 to 14 years. And the same Article 21A, it is the duty of the parent to provide education to the children up to the age of 6 to 14 years. That means they should send their children to schools up to the age of 14 years. And it is the right of the children. It is the right of the children to get educated. Okay. So this is Article 21A. Then Article 22, it says that no person shall be arrested without proper reason. That is warrant. What is warrant? Warrant is an official document issued by the magistrate to arrest a person. So there should be a reason for arresting a person. No person can be detained or arrested without any proper reason. That is Article 22. Okay. So Article 19 is you have Six freedoms. Okay. Then Article 20, it says that no person shall be punished except for the violation of law. 
Article 21 gives right to life and liberty. Each and every individual has right to live his life on his own terms. Then Article 21A, so remember, always remember, wherever this capital letter A, wherever there is this capital letter A, it shows that amendment was made to it. Okay, amendment, this A represents amendment. Okay, so it says that government should provide free and compulsory education to all the children from the age of 6 to 14 years. For this, we have government schools. And Article 22 says that no person shall be arrested without proper reason. When, when you are detaining or arresting a person, there should be a reason for arresting that person. Okay, now let us move to the next part. The third right is your right against exploitation. What do you mean by exploitation? Taking advantage of a person or a situation. Okay, the so right against exploitation. In this uh, right, you have two articles. See, you are right. Uh, right to freedom is ending at 22. Then immediately 23 is right against exploitation. 23 and 24. So you have two articles in right against exploitation. So what are the uh, two articles? Okay, Article 23 and Article 24. What is Article 23? It prohibits. Prohibit means ban. It prohibits sale and purchase of human beings. Article 23 says that human beings cannot be sold or purchased. Okay. Human beings cannot be sold or purchased. And it also prohibits forced labor. It also prohibits forced labor. Okay. Then you have Article 24. I hope Article 23 is clear. It is against buying and selling of human beings and forced labor. Article 24, it prohibits employment of children below 14 years. Okay, it, it prohibits employment of children below 14 years. That means it prohibits child labor. It prohibits child labor. Okay, especially in dangerous places, especially in dangerous places like factories and mines, because fact in factories you will have huge machinery, okay, which may, you know, a ch child may get hurt, okay, and from mines, poisonous gases are emitted, which may, you know, uh, hamper the development of the child. So, it prohibits no, uh, child labor, especially in the dangerous places like factories and mines. Okay, this is your uh, right against exploitation. You cannot, uh, according to Article 23, you cannot buy or sell the human beings. You cannot, you know, make anybody as your slave. It prohibits slavery. Okay, and Article 24. It prohibits employment of children below the age of 14 years, especially in the places like factories and mines. So quickly, uh, we will see the three rights. Okay, your first right is right to equality. Articles 14 to 18. Okay. Articles 14 to 18. 14 to 18. 
then second right is your right to freedom this is your articles 19 to 22 okay and third is your right against exploitation so you have only two rights here that is two articles here 23 and 24 so here you have five articles here you have four articles and here you have two articles like this remember the number of articles in each right it will be easy for you to learn you need not write like this okay directly write the heading like this and you can write this two points like numbering it one and two so here if you are you know writing the second point first and first point at the last it will be okay if you are not mentioned after mentioning the article numbers after mentioning the article numbers, if you are not writing pro properly, then you may lose the marks. Okay. So, if, if you are unable to remember the article numbers, just write it as the heading and write the points. So need not write the uh, article numbers for each article. Okay. Let us move to your fourth right, that is right to freedom of religion. Right to freedom of religion. So what is this right? This right gives us the freedom to practice and promote religion of our choice. This right gives us the right to practice and promote the religion. That is article 25. Okay, Article 25 gives us the freedom to practice and promote religion of our choice. Then Article 26 gives freedom to establish institutions to promote religion and acquire property for the same. So you can, you know, establish your own religious institutions and you can acquire, you can buy the property for the same. For example, for Gurukuls, for Madarsas, you can buy the property. You can establish Madarsa or Gurukul and you can buy the property for the same. That is your Article 26. Article 27 says that no taxes are collected to promote any religion. Government does not collect any tax. Government should not collect any tax to promote any religion and article 28 says that no religious instructions are given in government schools and colleges so government or state run schools and colleges no religious instructions are given okay this is your right to freedom of religion you have freedom to Practice and promote religion of your choice. Under this, again, you have four articles 25, 26, 25, 26, 25, 26, 27, and 28. So, four articles. In first right, you have five articles. In second, you have four articles. In third, you had two articles. Again, in your fourth right, you have four articles. Remember like this. It will be easy for you for writing these headings. It is starting from 14. 14 say 5 means 18. 14 to 18. After 18, it is 19. 19 to 4 means 22. After 22, it is 23. 23 and 24. After 24, it starts with 25, 25 to 28. Okay, for each article, if you try to remember the number, uh, for each right, if you try to remember the number of articles, it becomes easy for you to answer this question. Okay. Now, let us move to your next right, that is 
cultural and educational rights cultural and educational rights article 29 and 30 again you have only two articles in this again you have only two articles in this so what are the two articles article 29 it gives freedom to preserve and promote the language and culture okay article 29 it says that we have freedom to preserve our language to promote our language to preserve our culture and promote our culture then it also says that admissions are not denied denied in government schools and colleges on the basis of religion so when you are going for admission into government you no know, schools or colleges your admissions are not denied they can't say that they won't give you the admission on the basis of your religion on the basis of your religion okay and article 30 article 30 gives rights to establish educational institutions of their choice to minorities okay so minorities the minority communities they have right to establish their own educational institutions so we you, you can see we have many minority institutions christian minority muslim minority institutions so uh, they have right these minorities they have right to establish educational institutions for the betterment upliftment of their community okay so under uh, under your fifth right that is cultural and educational right you have two articles article 29 it gives you the freedom to preserve and promote your language and culture and in government schools and colleges admissions are not denied on the basis of religion and Article 30, it gives right to the minorities to establish their own educational institutions. Then comes your right to property. Right to property, Article 31. Right to property is your Article 31. Now, this right, it is deleted from this list of fundamental rights. In 1978, it was the 44th Amendment. So, 44th Amendment, fund, uh, right to property is deleted from the list of fundamental rights. Now, this right to property is a legal right. Right to property is a legal right. It is no more a fundamental right. So that is why now we have only six fundamental rights. So let us see the last one that is right to constitutional remedies. Okay. Now this right that is article 32. Article 32 of Indian constitution deals with right to constitutional remedies. This right protect all other rights okay this right protect all other rights so we can go to court of law okay to protect our rights and court will issue writs writs means orders i told you this earlier also writs means orders court will issue writs to protect our rights for example if i want to change my religion and i'm not allowed I can go to court of law and court will issue order as right to religion is my fundamental right. Court will issue the order and I can change my religion. Nobody will stop. It. Okay. So, uh, this is your right to constitutional remedies. So, here we can conclude that fundamental rights are not absolute. What do you mean by not absolute? We cannot enjoy these rights completely. Certain restrictions are imposed on them. Certain restrictions are imposed on our fundamental rights. For example, under Article 19, we have freedom of speech and expression. We have freedom of movement. Okay, if there is 
uh, you know, any uh, any problem, so the, you will be stopped from going to that locality. Okay, so your movement is restricted. So here we say that fundamental rights are not absolute. Certain restrictions can be imposed on them. Okay, I hope I'm clear with uh, the fundamental rights. Okay. So uh, quickly, I'll just give you one more trick. One trick how to remember the order of the rights and the article numbers. Your first right is right to equality. Right to equality. So articles starting from 14. Five articles are there in this. So 14 to 18. Then you have right to freedom. How many articles are there? Here you have five. In this you have four articles starting from 19. After 18, immediately 19. 19 to 22. Okay. 19 to 22. Then your third right is when you have freedom, it doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. Okay, if anybody is trying to, you know, take advantage, you have right against exploitation. Right against exploitation. This is the third time I am writing this. See, this is very important question. Under this, you have two articles. After 22, it is 23 and 24. Okay. Then, your fourth right is culture, freedom of religion, sorry. Right to freedom of religion. Okay. Under this, again, you have Four articles starting from 25 to 28. 25 to 28. Okay, then your fifth fundamental right is your cultural and educational. Rights. This is again you have two articles here that is 29 and 30. Just remember the order and how many articles it has. The next right is your right to property, which is deleted from the list of fund. Right to property. It is deleted from the list of fundamental rights. It is article 31. After 30, it is 31. And your last fundamental right is right to constitutional remedies. This is your article 32. Okay, so these are your six fundamental rights. Okay, so you can get a question. Quickly, we will move to uh, very short answers. Uh, you, you will understand how to write this. Remaining answers like LAQs, we will discuss in the next class. Say, here you have, you have a question for two marks. What is right to equality? Okay, so how uh, this answer is given here? In the same way, you can write for your LAQ. First right is your right to equality. It is from Article 14 to 18. It ensures equality before law. Equal opportunities are given to all. Untouchability is abolished. Titles are abolished. Okay. Only in the, in the field of, you know, armed forces and in academics, titles are given. So like this you can write this answer. 
in LAQ, first point, right to equality, and you can write like this. You need not mention article numbers. Then, right to freedom, article 19 to 20. It guarantees six freedoms like speech, expression, okay, freedom to assemble peacefully. Then it provides right to life and liberty and right to education. It ensures legal protection to all the citizens. No person can be punished except for the violation of laws. Okay, so you can you know, uh, write the answer or articles like this in points. Just mention the heading and write down in points or in a small paragraph also. Okay, you can write in a form of paragraph also. Then your right to religion. Okay, right to religion, articles 25 to 28. It gives freedom to practice and promote any religion of our choice. No religion is promoted by the government. It makes India a secular state. No religious instructions are given in the government schools and colleges. Okay, like this you can write few points about it. So then when you have one more question that is right to constitutional remedies okay this is your article 32 which protects all other fundamental rights and court will protect our rights by issuing writs okay like that like this also you can write this laq okay if say if you are learning this uh, bsaqs how many? VSAQ 1, 2, 3, and 7. 1, 2, 3, and 7. That means you have covered four uh, fundamental rights like this. Okay. So we'll take one more uh, small uh, topic uh, that is fundamental duties. This is the most repeated question. They'll ask you to write. Four fundamental duties of Indian citizen. See part. Part 4A. Article. Article. 51A, that means part 4 of our constitution was amended and article 51 was amended. Okay, part 4A, article 51A of Indian constitution deals with the fundamental duties of the citizen. It deals with the fundamental duties of the citizens. So, there are 11 fundamental duties. Fundamental duties are 11 in number. So, in two marks, they are asking you to write any four. The first is to respect national flag and national anthem. Students are very smart, right? What they do is, they'll divide this first point into two. Respect national flag. You respect national anthem. No, that is wrong. It is one. Okay, respecting national flag, national anthem and the constitution. The next is safeguard the public property. It is the duty of the citizens to safeguard the public property. Developing scientific temper is another duty. Protecting the natural environment and following the noble ideals or principles of our freedom, struggle. So like this, you can write any of the four fundamental duties. This is the most repeated question. If fundamental rights is asked for 10 marks, then you can expect duties for 2 marks or directive principles for 2 marks. Either they will ask you fundamental uh, rights or directive principles or differences between the two for 10 marks. If fundamental rights is asked for 10 marks, then for two marks, it will be either directive principles or fundamental duties. 
a fundamental duties sorry if fundamental duties are asked for 10 marks then for 2 marks they may ask you from fundamental rights or directive principles but here fundamental duties are not asked for 10 marks you don't have any question for 10 marks so here you will have directive principles directive principles for state policy is asked for 10 marks then they'll ask you either fundamental right, any of the fundamental right or fundamental duty or fundamental duty. If a difference is asked, differences between fundamental rights or directive principles is asked for 10 marks, then for two marks, you can expect fundamental duties. Okay. So, only uh, three topics are there in this chapter. You can easily uh, you know, score 12 marks. If you are writing perfectly, you will get you know, complete 12 marks. Uh, so, with this, I conclude my session today. We will continue in the next class.